Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. We took a ride up to Hastings today and stopped at a little uh, consignment store. Sitting in the store was something that I had talked to Lydia about having a couple of times. Uh, it's an electric scooter. The Schwinn S500. Now, admittedly, it's a little bit lightweight for me because it the capacity on the thing is 240 pounds and I'm just a bit north of that. I think I can fiddle around with it and make it work. You know how old Sneelock does. Likes to make things go. Right now the battery's on the charger. The charger's lit up, says it's green, so I don't know what that means. Could mean that the charger's gone south. I might have to spend another $13 and buy a new charger. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I looked at it and I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I wonder how much they want for it. Well, it turns out that they wanted enough that I thought it was more than what I wanted to spend. When I looked like I wasn't going to buy it, the proprietor said, well, what do you think is a good offer? And Lydia said 50 bucks and she jumped on it. So now I'm the proud owner of a Schwinn S500 scooter. It came to us with the battery sitting in the battery trough like this. And the lady said, well, I don't think it has a charger. But I looked at it and sitting next to it on the floor was this thing that said high power power adapter. And I assumed that that was something that fits, so I tried it in the uh, adapter here, and lo and behold, it plugged right in. So now I had the charger, and the battery, and a $50 bill cost. I thought, yeah, I can play with that, that'll be a lot of fun. So we came home with an electric scooter. I don't know which one of us is going to drive it. It's got a 240 pound weight limit. So that puts me a little bit over the weight limit. But we'll have to see how that works out. Lydia's kind of excited to drive it, but right now we have snow on the ground. Not a good idea. Well, when I connected the battery to the cables and turned on the switch, nothing happened. So I brought it down here, got out my fairy test meter, had this for a long, long time. It's something that I got when I was working with Dad. This is a 24 volt battery pack, two 12 volt lead acid batteries. And it's showing that it has Just about 14 volts. So that's good. I had it on the charger and it took a little bit of charge. It's showing more than having just one battery connected. So that's a very positive thing. So we'll plug in the battery. Turn it on. No movement out of the wheel. Okay. I went online and at ESP support I found a wiring diagram for the S500. And now I'm going to go through it says there's a fuse. And when I looked for the fuse I didn't see any fuse anywhere but there's a metal plate right here. It covers up an area where the wire is going into it and out of it. So I'm going to plug, unplug the battery and remove it from the frame. Then I'm going to remove the two Phillips head screws that hold this plate in. It's a bulkhead in the center, or a bulkhead on the front end of the battery cover 
cabinet. Here is a fuse. I'm hoping that I just have a blown fuse, but you never know. So I'm going to check it out. Oh, it's really corroded. If nothing else, it's really corroded. Doesn't look like it's blown, but that much corrosion on it. Pretty good chance that I have some connection problems. Okay, we've got continuity, but I had to scrape the dickens out of those contacts. That tells me that this thing has got a lot of junk in there. Let's see if I got continuity between the different parts. Okay, that wire's good. going into this. There's a 
wire tie right there. We're going to get the electrical tools. Clip this little tie wrap. go from the motor controller to the motor, that's this wire. The black wire, which is this sheet group of two, goes up to the brake lever. Two wires that go from the battery to the motor controller through the fuse. Go from the battery pack, the red goes from the battery pack through the fuse, through the switch, and then on over to the motor controller and from the motor controller it goes to the motor. So if I plug the battery directly into that, that should bypass the switch and the fuse. And all the controls. So I should get movement out of the motor. to the red and another lead to the black. I should be able to jumper this circuit and make it try and start the motor.
doing anything. continuity there. At 16 volts. I should have a motor that tries to turn. Battery's taking a charge. The charger's working. Once we got the fuse cleaned up, I was able to get power down through the wires to the battery. So the battery is now taking a charge. I can get movement on the needle. I'm getting 27 volts to the battery. That's good. Uh, the switch is working. The twist grip is working. So we're going to put this battery on the charger for a good six hours. See if I can't get it to take a charge. If I can get the battery to charge up, then I should be able to get everything to work. That's saying that the motor controller runs and that the motor runs. Right now I know I've got power going to the battery. The fuse appears to be the key. Let's hope that's it.